All right, I hope you're having an awesome day. We've got 40 and 60 yards, our favorite distances. Pitching ain't easy, but it can be. Let's go. All right, all right, let me, um, this video is gonna work a little differently. Uh, the first part, we're gonna be um, going over a drill, pitching, how to do it. Then, after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to a golf course and put it to work in real time, in real life, in, on the golf course, okay? Anyways, hope you like it. Uh, in case you're wondering where I'm at, I'm at the beautiful White Columns Country Club in Georgia, kind of my new, uh, one of my new home spots. So uh, I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in uh, something like them, checking them out. They're part of the Club Corp family who um, I've kind of partnered up with a little bit. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more of me at their facilities. Super excited about that. Their uh, network of courses, you can, uh, they have all kinds of different membership options too. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Give them a check out. Something may work out for you. Loving it. All right. Um, Let's get to our pitching tutorial video. Uh, excite, exciting stuff, fearful for some, but if you do it right, you, you'll, you'll love, you'll be loving life. Come on. All right, so I love it when we get to work on some short game stuff and I hope you like this video. And if you do, make sure you hit that like button. Love it if you would consider subscribing to the channel too. And if you do, hit that bell notification so you are aware of every time we release a new video and we're pitching today. Did I get it? Not bad. All right, one thing you will see on this channel is me on course a lot because I do believe, well, I'm doing the same thing with my golf game that you're doing. Like we're in this together. Like I'm trying to get better. I wanna play. I wanna, you know, be the best that I can be. And that's pretty much why you're probably here. And so, I'm gonna show you me on course actually playing in action. I don't edit around shots. You get what you get, I get what I get. That's how it works. And you will see me, good, bad, and the ugly. So pitching, I was at Whistling Straits and we were uh, under some extreme conditions. And there were some pitch shots that I had that I did not pull off. Take a look. So there you go, yeah, I mean, we've all done that. I do it, we all do it, it's gonna happen, it'll probably happen in the future, but then we gotta come back to the drawing board and work on our game so that those things don't happen anymore and that you can start just getting more and more confident so that next time you're faced with that, you can hopefully pull it off. All right, this is a little 40 yarder. I like these guys, so go in. And there's not even a hole there, it's just a little thing in my bottom. Anyways, let's go over the keys that we need to know in order to be consistent and confident when it comes to pitching because it is something that can drive us nuts. Okay, let's start here as what are you going to use when you have, let's say this 40 yarder or 60 yarder is going to be uh, something different. Hopefully, it might be the same thing, but you gotta figure out what works best for you. I do not like to use my 60 degree wedge on a little shot like this, even though I have this bunker to go over because that's, just something I like to kind of hit high and you could do it here, right? But it's just gonna bring in a lot of risk. I like to go in a little bit lower. For me, it's easier to control and see my shot. So I'm gonna either use my 54 or my 50 in this particular shot, 40 yards, all right? So I'm gonna use, not even my 54, I'm gonna use my 50 degree wedge because here's what I like to do. This has, what does it have? eight degrees of bounce. So that's not a ton of bounce. So what I will do is I will set up and then I will add more bounce to it by opening the face up a little bit. So I open that up, okay? So I'm on the slide. So that's gonna be first my stance. Okay, setup is all number one, right? Feet about this far apart, like two club heads apart on the inside of it, right there, okay? Then I set up pretty square to my target face is squared, then I open the face a touch, okay? Then I grip the club. Now I'm good to go. Notice my hands and everything are in the center. I don't like this, some people like that, it's not my thing. Okay, so I'm here 
hands back, if anything. But I like right in the center, open that face, then grip the club, and you're good to go in terms of your setup. Right? That was actually pretty good. So you can still get a lot of grass on that, get it a little chunky, but because you open that face first, then grip, that eight degrees bounce turns into 10 or 12, and you're able to, to have a lot more forgiveness, let's say, through the ball. And I do choke down a bit, maybe an inch or inch and a half down on that club. All right, so that's all the setup pieces right here that, uh, that I like to focus on right there. And if you're gonna make mistakes, go too narrow rather than too wide here, okay? And uh, hands would be further back than further forward. That's the mistakes if you do something extreme. Moving on. So we've got the setup piece good, right? That's gonna be critical. And it doesn't matter um, your lie. This is Bermuda grass. When we were up at Whistling Straits, it was a bent grass. So much tighter lie, a lot less cushion under the ball. So uh, I just didn't, mentally, I didn't think about that in terms of my setup. Otherwise, I would have opened that face a lot more than I did. And that's why I hit it uh, way behind the ball, got it really chunky. So that's going to happen. So it's just mental mistakes. Let's make sure we set up and just, that's why typically when I go back to practice, I use a lot more club than normal because I have to open it up more. And so you just get in the habit of opening that face up when you're pitching so that you don't, you don't have to consciously think about it. But I didn't put in the time and practice ahead of time. So I went out there and I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it. So here we go. Narrow, open, choke down. Now here, I'm just want to take everything. I don't want to be rotating hands. Don't want to flip this thing. I'm thinking upper shoulders. Okay. Upper shoulders. A lot of people pinch their armpits together up higher. Okay. Not low in your elbows, but like as high in your armpit as possible. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking this. A lot of people ask me like, am I swinging shoulders, whatever. Yeah. I'm thinking upper chest shoulders is my swing. I don't want to get all tight like this, but that's relaxed. This is what I'm thinking about in that area as I just turn and go. And you're going to want to figure out your particular rhythm, your swing, how far you go back. I can say here, but for some people they like here, right? You got to figure out your rhythm and, and timing that syncs up, that equals your best result, your most consistent result. So that's going to be a little different for everybody. That's why I don't say two, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock. Like I'm not a big clock guy. I'm more of like, hey, figure out your rhythm and that will equal the distance of your swing. There's a, one more little piece that we need to really dial you in. Uh, we want to keep it simple, so not too much. It'll set up, one swing thought, and one more little, little piece. It's going to really help you out. Okay, so we're gonna play some holes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our pitching. Pitching, pitching ain't easy, baby. Today we're at the beautiful Atlanta National Golf Club. I've been off lately, so I put in some practice, because that's what it's gonna take if you wanna get better. But after practice, you have to take it to the course in a specific way, though. Okay, I'm in a good spot here with my three wood. Now, do I want to make birdie here? Yeah, I want to make birdie here. Who wouldn't? But putting it on the green isn't going to help my pitching. You see, I put in all that work. Now you have to put it to the test. Because without the test, the work don't matter. You got to be tested. If you want to pull it off under pressure, you got to pull it off on the course. So instead of trying to fire this right at the flagstick, I'm going to. Man, if I miss left, it's gonna roll down the hill a little bit. And I'm gonna have a pitch. So I'm gonna go short left of 118. I'm gonna hit it about, let's say, 110 and a little bit left of the flag. That's my goal. So I can have a pitch up because that's what I wanna work on. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't pull it. I, uh, well, I pushed it and land on the green and rolled up about eight feet from the hole. So 
Um, no pitch on the first hole. It's okay, we'll fix that. Okay, when you do this drill on course, the par threes are really gonna be the place where you have the best opportunity, okay? Uh, even though I tried on the par four and keep trying, we'll do it differently the next par four, par five, okay? But now we're at a par three, it's playing 189 to the flag, 158 to the front edge. I wanna go a little bit shorter than that, so 150, so I'm gonna hit a nine iron, so I'm guaranteed to come up short. If something weird happens, I'm gonna be short, I'm gonna get a pitch up to the hole. It's a great way to play uh, long par threes anyways, especially if you practice like this. It's gonna make these holes uh, pretty easy because you your up and down ability is gonna be ridiculous. Right. And uh, just make sure there's no bunker there. Then, then play to the back, but pins in the back, we'll leave it short. You know, also a lot of people ask me just about taking kind of your range swing to the golf course this is a, a drill on course that reaps the benefit of that because there's just so much less pressure on you uh, when you're hitting a nine iron 190 yards. You know, you're not gonna get there. You're gonna leave it short. And so it's just, you have more freedom to take a good swing. And then you get, you train your brain how to take great swings on the golf course. All right, now we got this pitch shot. Uh, no problem, tight lie. We're going to use our chipping technique that we learned and we're going to apply it here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I've got this 50 degree wedge. I'm going to open it up, use all the same setup, uh, you know, lessons we learned and let it go to the hole. It's easy. Let's go see what happens. bad does it right there look a three-footer take that well, we'll make it but that's what happens okay easy par the par threes are gonna be a lot easier to pull this off because it's just a number we're gonna do the same thing though on the next hole it's a par five and see if we can't have the same uh, result. Because we want as many of these pitches as possible. Because remember, you're practicing, you're taking your practice to the golf course. So that when you're not trying to do this, you're just gonna have a, a massive amount of confidence. So what I want you to do is say, okay, I'm, I got one out of one up and down with the pitch shot, okay? So one for one. You ideally want 18 of them, but we missed the first green. You know, we hit the green, so we didn't, we didn't have a pitch shot. So now we, this, we did the second one, so we're one, and we got up and down, so one out of one. See how many of those we can get. All right, so I have 228 left to this par five, holes way down there, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go for it with a five wood, but I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna just try to miss to the right of the green. So uh, there's some opening there that give me a nice pitch up. So even if you can do it, you know, for Eagle or whatever, do that. You have an opportunity, so I'm gonna to try to do it. All right, great news. This is what you want to happen. Uh, I have a good second shot, but it hooked, because just a lie made it hook, made it draw. Hit that tree over here, ricocheted in the water, okay? Yellow hazard, so I gotta drop on this side. It's perfect. So I'm dropping three, hitting four. I gotta, gotta get up and down for par. Now my pitch shot matters. That's what you want. And this is gonna happen a lot on par fives, especially with water, you go for it, whatever. Um, so I'm gonna drop here. Here we go. Lovely. Now it counts again. Let's get up and down. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did on all the other pitches. This time I'm just gonna use a 60 because I do want it to go a little higher, but I'm still gonna open it. Still gonna do the same thing, weight, position, everything's the same, just a more lofty club. About a 20 yard pitch, we got it.
not bad I was able to spin that one pretty good and it's about the same distance a putt I had on the last hole so I'm feeling confident with that one all right there you go pitching ain't easy well if you do it the right way it can be easy and you've got to take it on course to make it even easier and make it apply to your game so that you can pull it off when it counts like that last hole it counted and uh, we did it and you can do it just uh do the technique practice it on course and you'll be on your way pitching is easy love you guys hope you like this video let me know what else you want me to do on course for you cranking it out love you guys See you in the next video.